Those who stand in my way do so at their own risk. Prepare yourself! What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Out channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. We're finally at the last character for this series, the most popular character, and it's going to be the legendary dragon, the main hero, the poster boy of this series, Zhao Yun. Zhao Yun is a general of the Three Kingdoms period who has a record of good service, and Liu Bei personally praised his bravery at Han River. Though it was often noted that his feats were often under the radar, Romance of the Three Kingdoms and other local folklore commonly describes him as a just and virtuous general of peerless strength who has a deep sense of loyalty for Liu Bei. His lone rampage to protect A Do remains one of his crowning feats in fiction, and years after his death he allowed it as one of the five Tiger Generals. His Dynasty Warriors incarnation is the mascot character of the series, and he sometimes shares the spotlight with the series' other iconic character, Liu Bu. He consistently rides a white steed during in-game cutscenes, and like I've already mentioned, Zhao Yun is the most popular character of this Dynasty Warriors series. Before we talk all about Zhao Yun, the poster boy himself, the legendary dragon, a very iconic character for this series. Let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Zhao Yun reigns in as the number one character. In the first popularity poll, consisting of about 75,000 total votes, we have Zhao Yun coming in at number five with 2,100 of those votes, putting him at the fifth position. In the second popularity poll, he's going to jump up to the second position, and then of course in my personal rankings, he's also at the second position as well. Because of his placement within the rankings, it's no surprise to see Zhao Yun up here at number one. And I know Zhao Yun gets a lot of flack because of him being constantly pushed into the fan face as the poster boy and, you know, having all the openings and everything like that. Zhao Yun's a character that I've always enjoyed playing. He's a character that gets really hyped up and he's just really fun to play with. You can't really dislike the character for who he is within the games. I definitely understand the dislike for the character for the constantly pushing him in the face with the openings and, you know, of course, putting him on the cover, whatever it may be. But regardless, Zhao Yun's a very hard character to hate in-game as a character because he doesn't really have any negative personalities except for maybe his undying loyalty for Liu Bei. But that can also be seen as a positive as well because I would say that loyalty brings out the positive traits in Zhao Yun, including his ferocity, his courage, his braveness, and of course being a very humble and honorable character. All that just packs really well into a really charismatic character that you can't help but wanting to play. And that's why he's so high up for me. He's second on my list because he's just a character that I've always been drawn to play. So before we jump into how Zhao Yun has changed his playboy debut back in the first Dynasty Warriors game, he's an OG of the series and one of the most iconic characters of this series. Let's talk a little bit more about Zhao Yun for people who don't know. So the first thing I want to mention is why Zhao Yun is depicted as the main hero of the Dynasty Warriors series. It's due to the fact that Omega Force wanted the series to be focused on action-based fighting. I think Zhao Yun, even though he's maybe not the most deserving of being on the cover, I think it's still a very solid choice and the way he's depicted within the game definitely goes along with that. So like I said, Zhao Yun was a military general who lived during the late Eastern Han Dynasty and early Three Kingdoms period of China. Originally a subordinate of the Northern Warlord Gong Zun Zan, Zhao Yun later became to serve another warlord of the Yu Bei and had since accompanied him on most of his military exploits. He continued serving in the state of Shu Han founded by Liu Bei in 221 in the Three Kingdoms period and participated in the first of the Northern Expeditions until his death in 229. So Zhao Yun within the series is a very hard character to overlook because of the spotlight 
he gets within most of the openings and just being on the cover of the game. A lot of people are going to be drawn to playing him and seeing what his story is about, what kind of character he is, and just being really intrigued to play him. I think he's a really rewarding character to play. He's a very calm yet valiant general, and I just really enjoyed his play style. I can't really complain about Zhao Yun that much. I don't really mind him being the cover of the game or him having the spotlight in the openings or whatever it may be because I always thought Zhao Yun was a really cool character. His virtuous and just behavior not only is highlighted very well within the Dynasty Warriors series but it's also transcending within history. But yeah Zhao Yun within the Dynasty Warriors series is a very instrumental and pivotal character for the Shu forces. He commands quite a presence within the games and he has quite a bit of interesting features in the game especially around the Battle of Changban which we'll dive deeper into later parts of the video. Within the game Zhao Yun is definitely one of the most valuable characters to Liu Bei and he has the utmost faith in him and he was always a very compassionate and trustworthy person who was always on good terms with the entirety of the Shu forces. Like I said Zhao Yun really commanded such a presence about himself that a lot of people looked up to Zhao Yun as a leader, as a general, as someone to be like. He was a huge role model for some of the younger generation as some of the you know older characters were starting to die off and Zhao Yun always played a really good role in being that character to lead by good example. Even when he was getting older within the games he was still able to hold his own against really talented characters and still be that person that that the Shu Kingdom could rely on to get things done. Of course he has his faults because he's blindly you know following Liu Bei no matter what happens but I think it's a really good trait because Zhao Yun sees the positivity, the virtue, the benevolence that Liu Bei really stands for. That allows him to faithfully follow Liu Bei even in times when you know for example like the Battle of Yiling when you know perhaps Zhao Yun doesn't really agree with the reason that Liu Bei wants to go to war. But because I think Zhao Yun really understands Liu Bei as a person and really can see that benevolence and the integrity that Liu Bei has as a leader, I think Zhao Yun faithfully followed him all the way up until his death and passes on to Liu Shan. Zhao Yun does everything in his power to get Liu Shan ready and prepared to be a leader of the kingdom before, of course, Zhao Yun passes away. But we have quite a bit to cover here with Zhao Yun. We're going to go ahead and jump into how he's changed in the series and then we'll talk about his significant battles, his relationships, and his death. So starting off with his appearance, within the game, Zhao Yun has a pretty good appearance. It's one of the best ones among the series and even when he jumps from Dynasty Warriors 5 to Dynasty Warriors 6, he just goes to a, another level of like badassery when he gets a full death decked out armor in Dynasty War 6. It was really cool to see when Dynasty War 6 first came out, it was pretty hyped up with the opening and Zhao Yun smashing people. And he's a hard character to overlook because of the crazy things he does in some of the openings and you just want to see what this character is about. Uh, the pre-Dynasty War 6 era was pretty good for him as well. I really like the, for lack of better terms, like traditional look. It was a very like Eastern style kind of look with a dragon pattern and it just really complimented him as a character and it fit really well for his first appearances within the game. And then in the later games, I actually liked the way he looked in Dynasty Wars 7 and 8. I really fit his heroic image, it really fit the character, and I never really had a problem with the way he looked. And then over to Dynasty Warriors 9, they revisit the look from Dynasty Warriors 6, and they give him armor from head to toe, and he looks pretty badass. Can't complain about the way Zhao Yun looks, and anyone who is fans of him probably wouldn't complain about the way he looks either. He's one of the best looking characters within the game, and he has to be, because he's on the cover, he's in the opening. They really wanted to get you excited for, you know, playing the game, so having someone like Zhao Yun be a representation of the Dynasty Warriors series is something that I've never really minded at all. So yeah, I can't complain about his appearance. Now moving on to his weapon style within Pretty much all the games, Zhao Yun has always wielded a spear. Through Dynasty Warriors 2 to Dynasty Warriors 9, of course, you know, if you want to include the original Dynasty Warriors as well, he's always had the spear and it's always been his signature weapon. This is where I really like fell in love with the character because I've always been a fan of spears and stabs and I would say Zhao Yun is the reason for that because of his fighting style. Now it's not the most flashy or really super cool fighting style, it's just really fun. His attacks flow really, really well. Now the only thing I don't like about the weapon in particular as I believe Dynasty Warriors 8 when the spear becomes kind of like a rubber like a rubbery spear and it kind of whips around a little bit I like it when the spear is more tout when it doesn't move as much because it just it, it kind of takes away from the intimidation that you're kind of getting smacked around with this like rubber spear instead of a very dangerous weapon that Zhao Yun really carries around. He might have had that similar effect in some of the other games but Dynasty Wars 8 was really apparent and I just I couldn't get behind it. I just didn't really like the way that weapon flowed. The weapon moveset itself flowed really well. He does a lot of lunging movements within his moveset. When he does the lunge it doesn't seem like it's going to like 
bend or like break or anything. With the rubbery spear, it's like how much effectiveness does a lunge have if it's just gonna bend on you. But regardless, the weapon style for him is pretty good. Can't complain too much about it. The Musao attacks in all the games is pretty decent as well. I really liked his Musao attack in Dynasty Warriors 6. It's probably my favorite one. Dynasty Warriors 2 through 5 was good as well. Very basic. I like the true Musao attacks in the later games. I like the AoE that it had at the end. But it was a pretty good, you know, pretty good attack. Very good range. He kind of just spun a little bit and at the end he just hits it with a big widespread AoE. Clears out enemies in front of you. It's pretty good. Can't complain too much about it. But Dynasty Warriors 6 was pretty fun. I, I liked his Musao attack in Dynasty Warriors 6. It was pretty good. Just like the flashiness behind it followed by the AoE. And then Dynasty Warriors 7, 8, and 9. Dynasty Warriors 7, 8 was okay. It kind of fit for Zhao Yun, again, sticking with that lunging moveset that he's very accustomed to have. They took that and put it into his Musao attack. His aerial Musao attack was pretty cool. It's very simple, but I thought it was pretty nice. And then his second Musao in Dynasty Wars 8 wasn't bad as well. And then Dynasty Wars 9, he combines his older Musaos with his new ones, and it fits him just fine. I can't complain about the Musao attacks at all. My favorite is going to be the Dynasty Wars 6 one. I almost want to say I like the moveset in Dynasty Wars 6 the most as well. The strong flow attack for his Renbu style was pretty good. It just flowed really well. Pretty good moveset. Can't complain too much about it. I can see they tried to implement that within some of the other games, but it was a little different. But yeah, for the most part, Zhao Yun can't complain about his weapon style at all. It's a legendary weapon style, and it's one of my favorites. I love playing through Zhao Yun and his story. It's always fun to watch what he's going to do next. Now, moving on to his voice acting. Now, hands down, Zhao Yun has one of the best voice actors in the game. It really displays that heroicness, that main hero energy that Zhao Yun is really built to be within the game. Dynasty Warriors 3, it was pretty good. Now is not the time to attack Wu. We must join with them to attack Cow Cow! Wasn't the best, but it, you know, it fit him. It was it was decent for, you know, his real, like, first playable appearance and really having the ability to speak and everything. Dynasty Wars 4 through 8, he gets the best voice actor for him. Zhao Yun of Cheng Shan has taken over the enemy fortress! And like I said, it just fit him so well. An extremely heroic sound for Zhao Yun, and it just fit him perfectly. One of the best voices within the game, and I can't really complain at all. I really enjoyed the way he sounded within that game. It really brought out that, again, heroicness, you know, presence that Zhao Yun really brings to the series. I think the voice actor did an amazing job with Zhao Yun during those games. Now in Dynasty Warriors 9, he gets a different one. Master Liu Bei, you just can't give up like that. And it does take a step down. It's not, of course, as good as the last one. But it's it's okay. Like, it fits him weirdly. It's not the same heroic sound from the previous game, but it definitely, it's more of a general commander. Like, I would say the voice actor brought more of the serious components out of Zhao Yun. Still remained humble, still remained virtuous and just. But the voice acting was, it brought more of his seriousness out versus the main hero energy that he had with the previous voice actor. But I can't complain about the voice acting too much. I think overall it's pretty good for Zhao Yun. Now let's go ahead and move on to the last parts of the video. So starting off with the significant battles. So obviously Zhao Yun has a bunch of battles just because he's one of the oldest members of the Shu forces. He joined a little bit later, but he's been there for a while. He does a lot for Liu Bei and the Shu forces. But I want to talk about just a few of his really significant ones. So first I want to talk about the Battle of Hulao Gate. Not super significant, but the only reason I want to mention it really quickly is because this is where, usually in most of the games, this is where Zhao Yun meets Liu Bei for the first time. Sometimes he leaves in that battle to go with him. Sometimes he follows him, whatever it is. But this is the battle where he actually meets Liu Bei and he decides like, wow, this guy's really cool. He's got the same morals and principles that I do as a person. I really want to see what becomes of this character. And of course, at some point that leads him to joining Liu Bei. Now moving on to the battle of Chung Ban. This is his most significant battle within the series. This is the moment that Zhao Yun is really known for, which is saving Liu Shan when he was a baby after, you know, Li Bei's forces and everybody was forced out of their current territories and they had to flee. Zhao Yun, by himself, according to history and within the games, goes back, saves Liu Bei's son, Liu Shan, and his wife, and somehow gets them back to safety to Liu Bei's forces unharmed. I don't know how he did it. The games do a great job of displaying it. One of the games takes the whole opening and <laughs> displays how he does it, which is awesome. But this is Zhao Yun's moment. This is where he becomes basically the legend that he's really known for. People are like almost astonished by how this character is able to just charge through thousands of people and then go back and charge through another thousand people to get back to Liu Bei just to save a child and of course Liu Bei's wife. A very commendable act for Zhao Yun and I, I can understand why he's the, I mean who else has really done that within history? Nobody. Not saying it's the greatest feat of all time but that's crazy man. You have to have some courage and bravery to be able to do that and pull it off successfully. Very important battle for Zhao Yun. It really establishes his legacy within the games and within history. And this is where he really becomes who he was. Now moving on to the battle of Chengdu. More of a minor battle for him, but still important. 
This is where he, you know, joins Liu Bei in taking down Yi province and, of course, securing that region for Liu Bei, acquiring a land of his own for the very first time. He doesn't play a significant role within the battle, but he's definitely there. He might have a couple cutscenes where he's trying to convince Liu Bei to do it, like it's okay. You know, it's part of what you have to do as a leader. Zhao Yun embarks on the journey with him. They take down Yi province. They secure Chengdu and... You know, the Empire of Shu is pretty much born. Now, moving on to the Battle of Han River slash Mount Dingjun. So, this battle is not really noted within the series. There's no battle within the games that is the Battle of Han River. So, I'm going to chalk it up to the Battle of Mount Dingjun because within history, from what I've read, Zhao Yun would do a similar feat to that of Chang Bang. So, after Xiao Yuan's defeat, and you know, Huang Zhan heard that enemy troops were transporting food supplies, he went to go retrieve them from their enemy forces. When Huang Zhang did not return to the camp in time, Zhao Yun would lead a group of horses horsemen out in search of Huang Zhang. At the time, Cao Cao had sent his forces to attack Liu Bei's positions, and Zhao Yu encountered his forces along the way. Cao Cao's main force showed up and ended up surrounding him, and despite the overwhelming odds, Zhao Yu attempted to charge and break through the enemy formation and alternated between fighting back and retreating. Cao Cao's forces would then regroup again, got back into formation, and surrounded Zhao Yu once more. Left with no choice, Zhao Yu had to fight his way out and head back to camp, and during the battle, one of his deputies was wounded, but Zhao Yu once again turned back, saved him, and brought him back to camp. So kind of a similar situation to the Chang Ban thing, and it was very interesting to read because, again, another incident where Zhao Yun is showing this outstanding courageousness and bravery, but he can easily get killed by anyone around him. And he's just going back and forth, retreating, fighting, saving people, fighting. It was really interesting to read about because it just shows how much Zhao Yun, at least within history, and why it transcends into the games, how much courage this character had, and it was just cool to see. But yeah, very interesting thing to read about. Now moving on to the Battle of Yi Ling, we have his last battle I want to talk about real quick. Not super significant, doesn't play a huge role or anything like that, but I want to talk about it real quick because in most of the games, this is where Zhao Yun actually disagrees with Liu Bei. It's actually true within history as well that he attempted to dissuade him by telling him that we shouldn't be attacking Sun Chuan. We shouldn't be focusing on Wu at this time, we should definitely be focusing on Wei. And in most of the games, there is a cutscene or event where he's trying to convince Liu Bei to not go through with the invasion of Wu. Of course, the invasion happens, Liu Bei loses, he succumbs to a little illness a little later after the defeat at Yi Ling. But I want to mention it really quickly because he doesn't play a huge role, at least within the battle. Of course, you know, he's there, he's helping, doing what he's got to do to help his lord, but it was just really important to note that Zhao Yun was one of the main proponents against the battle against Wu, even though they lost somebody who I think was close to Zhao Yun being Guan Yu. And with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about his relationships as well, and then we'll talk about Zhao Yun's death. So starting off with his most significant relationship within the game, we have Liu Bei. So Liu Bei and Zhao Yun, I mean, they're very similar in terms of morality, principles, what they believe in, what they fight for, what they think is the best thing for the land and what should be done. So it was obvious that the first time Xiao Yun meeting Liu Bei and just being, you know, being able to talk to him, whatever it was, he was instantly hooked. He instantly had the connection with the character and he wanted to be a part of whatever Liu Bei was pursuing. And Liu Bei in turn would go on to treasure someone like Xiao Yun because he is a character unlike no other within the games because he can do things like I've already mentioned that no character really does. And again, that kind of goes into his relationship with the other characters because it's gaining this respect as a person because of the feats he's able to accomplish under Liu Bei's forces. Very close relationship to Zhao Yun. He looks up to Liu Bei very much so and believes in Liu Bei's vision 100%. Even in moments when Liu Bei is doubting himself, you know, the Battle of Yi Province or even after Yi Ling when he has moments of regret or whatever, Zhao Yun is there to c consistently comfort him and to remind him, you know, why he started in the first place and what his goal was because that's the reason that so many people have been drawn to him. And I would say Xiao Yun has a similar effect on people because he radiates that same aura. He radiates the same moralities and principles as Liu Bei. And that's why when Liu Bei passes away, so many people look up to Xiao Yun because he has those similar traits. But very close relationship there. Very important for Xiao Yun. It's the reason that he is who he is. He's able to do the things that he does because he's doing it for Liu Bei. It makes him stronger as a character. And he does everything in his power to help Liu Bei move forward. Now moving on to his next two relationships with Zhang Fei and Guan Yu. Similar relationships with these two. He might have a slightly closer relationship with Zhang Fei just because of the Battle of Changban. But it's a very similar one. They all respect each other as very valiant and courageous generals within the Shu forces. And they all understand that they're there to help Liu Bei move forward, whatever it may be. His relationship with Zhang Fei is just a little bit closer, I would say, because of the cutscenes they share together. They end up fighting with each other a bunch of times, especially at the Battle of Changban when Zhao Yun is retrieving the young Liu Shan and he comes back to the bridge and Zhang Fei is there to assist him getting those people back to Liu Bei. 
I would say that Zhang Fei and Guan Yu trust Zhao Yun implicitly, but because of that trust, because of what Zhao Yun has already demonstrated up to that point, the skills that he has as a warrior, I think Zhang Fei and Guan Yu really respect that in Zhao Yun. So very good relationship what they have. It's definitely one of mutual respect among the three. Now moving on to his relationship with Zhu Ge Liang. So I would say this relationship is a similar one to Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, but it's mutual respect for each of their individual talents. So, you know, Zhao Yun's obviously a commander, a general, a warrior, and, you know, Zhu Ge Liang is more of the strategist and the person behind guiding Liu Bei to, in the right direction. And I think Zhao Yun really respects that in Zhu Ge Liang, but I would say the relationship flourished a little bit more after the death of Liu Bei because both of these characters are doing their best to prepare Liu Shan to become the leader of the Shu Kingdom. I guess we'll just talk about Liu Shan's relationship as well. So him and Liu Shan have a very good relationship. I would say Liu Shan looks up to him. His respect and admiration for Zhao Yun is unquestionable, and he pretty much will listen to anything the general has him do. Zhao Yun's always had good intentions, so Liu Shan can see that, and of course, since Liu Shan was a baby at the time, he's not gonna really remember what happened, but because of what he's heard, the legend around him being saved, I'm sure Liu Shan had the utmost respect and admiration for Zhao Yun, and then even when he became the emperor of Shu, he would do anything and everything that Zhao Yun would ask of him, but he's there to make Liu Shan better, and I think Liu Shan really respects that and admires that from him as a person. Now, the next two people I wanna mention is his relationship with Zhang Bao and Guan Jing. I wanna mention these two real quickly because Zhao Yun has kind of a mentor or teacher kind of relationship with these two because they are the sons of Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. A lot of the older generation was passing away. The new and younger generation was looking to the remaining older generation as examples of what was expected among the Shu forces. They have a few cutscenes with Zhao Yun as he's mentoring them, training them, getting them ready for becoming leaders among the Shu kingdom. And I would say he had a minor relationship with both of these characters as he only wanted them to become the best versions of themselves. So that way they could propel the Shu kingdom forward after Zhao Yun and the remaining members of the older generation passed away. Now moving on to his last relationship with Jing Sai and Ma Chao. So Jing Sai, I would say Jing Sai again would look up to Zhao Yun as an older elder brother, an uncle, someone of respect and admiration, someone that she wants to be like, whatever it may be. She admires his strength, his courage, his bravery. Zhao Yun takes his time, some of the games, to really comfort Jing Sai and let, let her know that he's always there for her if she needs it. Within the later games, it kind of dissipates a little bit. They don't have much of a relationship, but I know that Jing Sai implicitly trusts and respects Zhao Yun to the highest of degrees for everything he's accomplished up until that point. Small relationship there I want to mention. And then with Ma Chao, another small relationship, but because both of these characters have similar moralities and principles together. They don't have a lot of extended moments with each other, but because they both believe in justice and virtue, that's where their personalities intertwine with each other. And I can see them really getting along with each other because of what they both believe in. They're very similar with each other. The only thing that's really, really different is Ma Chao is, you know, out for vengeance. And, and I would say Xiaoyun doesn't really have that kind of side unless you know, someone threatening like Liu Bei or like someone he needs to protect, but they have a good relationship. I would definitely say they respect each other's talents and abilities as well. Now, moving on to the last part of the video, we have Zhao Yun's death. He just passes away, I believe, of old age or illness at some point. Nobody kills him. And I believe in some legends, like nobody actually beats him in battle. He actually beat Zhang Fei in a duel at one point, according to what I've read. But yeah, he ends up just passing away of old age or illness at some point. And of course, within this series, he is the number one most popular character. And I can't really argue with it or was really shocked to see because of what Zhao Yun represents in this game. He really represents Dynasty Warriors and because the developers took the time to really push that with this character, he's going to be popular. He's going to be a character that people are gonna to wanna to play. But I've always liked the character Zhao Yun. He's a very humble and just character, very virtuous. And I can really respect that about the character, even though he quote unquote receives all this attention. No matter how big he gets, no matter how high he soars, he always remains humble and he always remains to his root. And I can really admire that about the character and he's always gonna be one of my favorites. But that's all I have for Xiao Yun here, guys. And that's it for this series, a four year process in the making. The series took a while to finish, but I'm glad I got to the last of it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the series. If you guys have not seen any of the other episodes, feel free to check them out. I've done every single character within this series from least popular to the most popular now. Hopefully they do another poll here at some point for like Dynasty Wars 9 or if they release Dynasty Wars 10. It'd be cool to see where everyone will stack in the new rankings. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have here, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, I definitely appreciate a like, comment, or subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about Zhao Yun down below. Are you guys fans of him? Do you guys find him annoying as well because of the way he's on all the games? Whatever it is, let me know down below. But that's all I have, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.
见。